Hey people, I'm the Broken Puppet and welcome back to my drawing tutorials. Today we're going to drawing this one you see here, so this awesome couple of the Samurai and Geisha. And I love this design, it's a really fun one, so I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to start off with two circles, just like so. One a bit harder than the other one for their faces. So basically I'm going to build their face off of each one of these circles. So come down from the front of it, bring a curved line coming down, and curved line and cut back into the, into the circle. Uh, for the male, you're going to bring the jawline back a bit further than the female. Draw a line roughly halfway through the shape, like so. It's going to give rough position for the eye and stuff. Draw another line just a little bit above it and halfway between that gap from the jaw and the halfway line. Now I'm going to start off with her face, so we're going to bring this line down, make a little dip in that line, curve out the side of the box and curve into it like so. And that's just going to create the nose. That secondary line, we're just going to create a little line out, dip down just below it and that's going to create the mouth. A little curve just around the bottom, dip into the, into the shape and curve round so you get a bit of a chin to it. Now it's a really simple structure and way of getting the face. Come back from that bottom part of the nose, just bring a triangle shape coming back, mimicking the uh, bridge of the nose, and then you should a rough position where you want to put the back of the eye. Bring a line going forwards across a halfway line, and just another line kind of pointing towards the tip of the nose, just a little bit. Bring a line up, little curve line up, and another one just pointing towards that little bit where the nose dips in and before it goes into the forehead. And that gives you a rough position for the eye and stuff. Bring curve line from where that sort of bends on the upper line, and that gives you a position for the eyebrow. So just take that up towards the ends and just go thin towards the outside part. That's the basic build up structure of her face. So now we've got her face but done, I'm going to go to his. Now for this kind of design I like to build up the face first and then kind of build the body off of it. Just to make sure the face is where I want it to. So the exact same principle, going to bring a little curved line out, you can see where the nose goes. They lip for the mouth and when you bring the line back for the mouth, make it a little bit wider just towards the back. It just kind of makes it sit a bit better. The curved line just around the chin, curving back. A little bit of a nostril on his, because his face is a bit more tilted, so you're going to see a little bit more nostril at this point. And the same principle, just bring that line, that line, curving back to that line, and curve to the front. And that's going to give this sort of rough position in where you want to put the eye. So you're going to create that line curving off through that center line. A little bit of line kind of pointing towards where the tip of the nose would be. And the eyebrow is going to be on top of that line, we're done above the center line. Sorry if it gets confused with all the lines, but you can see what I mean by the drawings. <laughs> So yeah, just building it up section by section. You know, now we've got the faces in there, we can start to build off of this. So I'll build his helmet, I'll build her hair, and then I'll start making the mechanics of her spine, shoulders, and build the clothes around it. So top of his head, you can see you've got a rectangle. That's the top part of his helmet. And then this big massive rectangle going to a much further point outwards to create the back of the helmet. This curved one here, it's gonna be the overlap of the front part of his helmet. And you've got this curved line coming up quite high above the circle, so if it sits right now, because the, the old fashioned samurai helmets sit quite high on top of the head. Create this big U shape like this, and it's going to create the emblem for the front of his helmet. And that's a very you know important feature of that. You can sort of change it around, but you always want something there. Two straight lines to the ball just come around the chin. That's going to create the rope that goes around there. Now go to her hair, so come around that sort of top part of her foreheads, curving all the way back, coming well outside the box, and curving back into it halfway through. I'm going to build it up section by section, so bold shapes rather than lines. A curve down the front, I like to curve to go quite close to the eye, you know, so it sort of covers up quite a bit of the face, I think it just makes it feel better. Two curved lines at the top, make sure the back one comes up quite high and cuts into it, because you want that fringe kind of curving up and back, so looping around. So you want something for that to sit onto. Now we've got that but basic structure for their spine, so he's quite curved forward, so I'm going to, he's curving this way, and she's leaning forward, so I'm going to have her spine curving the other way. Now i put these ones here for the shoulders, you know, it's not too important in this image because you don't see too much of the body shape really in it, but it's nice to know where they are and I think it's always important to make sure the structure sits just right. Bring the arm down like this to a point and cover up to create the baseline for the arm. Now on top of the shoulder, we're going to this big massive square and this is going to be his shoulder pad. Now just here, rectangle around the neck and a bit of a curve line up, this is where he has the base arm around his neck and then the fabric that's above it sitting around his neck. On the forearm, I'm going to bring this sort of square shape with a pointy tip towards his elbow. It's the start of his gauntlet. A couple of curved lines around it just to kind of give a sense of where his arm sits with his clothing. You know, because you have the fabric underneath the armour. A little curved line in the front now just to create a bit of his front torso. And a little bit of a square in the back just to create the inside part of his helmet and the outer part of his shoulder pad on the other, on the other side. I'll create these little loops here just to kind of create a bit of rope that's going to sit off of that rope off his chin. A bit of a box shape here just for his hands. It's a bit higher towards the front finger. I'm going to do four circles across the top and a little circle on the side to put it off the thumb. 
off of these circles and do two lines off of each circle going to a smaller circle just ahead of it to create the center parts of the fingers. And then another extension of that just curving off to create the tips of the fingers. And that's a very simple, good structure way of building up hands. Now we've got done, I'm going to bring a little bit of a neck, so I'm going to curve down from that circle we've done originally for a head, just kind of curving that shape to get a bit of a neck going towards the back. Now most of it's getting covered up with a dress, but it's nice to know the rough positioning so you know how far to go back with it. So these two box shapes here are basically her clothing going around it. Now I've put all these circles around here, because these circles are where I want to put cherry blossoms. So I'm just trying to find good locations to kind of cut off bits of the dress and clothing that kind of dangles down to nothing. So it kind of has a structure to sit off of. And then you want to carry that through a little bit so in the background and stuff, so it all kind of makes sense. Now your shoulder pad here, you can see I've divided into four sections. The top section, I've made a bit more curved towards the top. You know, I'm now sort of going into more detail everything. So now I've got the basic shapes and now refining everything. So on those bottom three uh, rectangles, I've got another line going across the top bit to create a little bit of detail. And I'm going to have these sausage shapes there, three on each one to create a little bit of rope. And the idea is that's what connects each one of those plates of his armor. I'm going to do a very similar thing on his helmet here now. So you see I'm doing the base of it here, this bottom rectangle, and I'm going to do two more sitting above. And each one's going to sit a little bit inside it, so the bottom one is always overlapping the others. If you get what I mean, so I'm going to sit on top of it. Three little sausage shapes just sitting underneath, you know, because the rope's connecting a little bit differently. It's connecting to the under part of these ones. A little line to the bottom as well for more detailing. Now going on to that little side flap on the top bit, so I've got one sort of curved rectangle, and then I've got two little ones on the side. And once I've got this, a little front plate just sitting on the top of his forehead, I've just gone around the outside and put an extra line just going around it, just to make it feel a bit, you know, like it's got a bit of a rim. And let's go on to the top part of the helmet here. So I basically reinforced that U shape we've done, just create a little curve, and a little line just curve around the inside part of the left hand side, just to make it a bit more 3D. And top of the helmet, you see here, I've got these curved lines coming down from that tip I just put on the top, and it kind of gives a structure of where it kind of divides. Now here I put a curved line just curving through that rope, and then I made sort of these kind of S sort of shapes to curve around and make it more bendy so it feels like rope. And the bottom part of the rope there, I just made a bit more realistic, so I made the two lines a bit more accurate, and the same principle, diagonal lines, and then reinforce that curving around. The inner part of the neck there, I just put two lines in that gap. And just there, I'll put a bit of his chest detail now, so I've just got some curved lines covering into his body where his armor sort of like layers up. Reinforcing just around his gauntlet now. So the tip, I just kind of cut a little bit off the edge of the tip, a little bit of lunch around his thing, and I sent the line down it, and I create this little box shape sitting in the side edge for a bit of extra detail. A little bit of lines just for his clothing as well, so that inner part of his arm just where it bends, a few curved lines coming back. And I'm going to reinforce the hand shape, so I'll put this like box shape just over the top where his kind of front glove bit sits on top of his hand and then just reinforce the fingers going around the outlines. Now I'm going to go into her now, so I'm going to start off with putting a little cherry blossom in her hair, so it's a little circle followed by five oval shapes coming around it, and little triangles in between those. You know, cherry blossom is a very simple structure, you know, it's a very basic flower, but it's a very lovely flower, and works extremely well on Asian style stuff. So I've got these two spikes in the hair, it's going to be basically her hairpins, they're going to go through the hair, and I'm mimicking the shape of the hair, just bringing an extra few lines through each shape, curving around like so. Now I put all those tray blossoms through those little circles we've done, all the way around, just mimicking the same principle of those, and I'm just reinforcing my work now, so I'm just rubbing all those little lines we don't need out, and I'm just going over the top now with my liners, and I put a few extra details, so inside the helmet, you can see I've got a little pattern work, and inside the shoulders and the hat bit there, I've got these repeating lines just curving down. Now I'm going to start with the shading, so I'm going to start from the top and work down, so on this helmet down the centre bit, I've got a bit dark shadow in the centre bit, and dark coming from the bottom. He's a uh, plate on the top of his head. You can see I put this shine, a diagonal shine on it. And a bit just on his forehead there, I've got two little highlights just coming downwards. So a bit of a shadow just through the center bit on the sides. It's a really simple trick that does it, just really nice. On the overlap there, I've got the first two box shapes done. I put a really dark bit through the center bit and on the side, leaving nice highlights. The pattern mark I just colored on the inside bit and a little bit of dark from either side. Now his helmet is a bit, a bit more simple. So we're, at, we're, we're, we're overlaps, so I have shadow coming from the bottom fading upwards, and then a bit of black from the sides coming inwards. That bottom bit there got black from either side, and the black bit in the center just fading outwards. So it's all about the same kind of sort of technique, it's just getting the right shadows in the right places, and just making it feel a bit more 3D. 
So I'm going to use face now, so a bit of shadow just above his eye, leaving a little highlight just above his uh, eyelid. A bit of shadow across the top, and a bit of shadow just coming down from the front part of his cheek in front of his eye. Now for his nose, I'm going to go right at the bottom bit in there, and just go over a little bit, a uh, little bit of shadow over that bit, and a little bit of a triangular shape underneath to create a bit of a shadow on his nose. A tiny bit on top of his lip, in the back of his mouth, and a little bit just underneath the chin. Now it's coming around the back of his head, so just sort of shading, fading, uh, shading outwards, well, shading or fading outwards, either way. God, I'm getting tongue tied today, aren't I? Jesus. Just a little bit behind his neck now, just put like a grey tone over the whole thing, a bit of darkness. His little arm a bit just behind the back of his neck as well, just black for either side, and a little bit more black through that centre strip. Down to his shoulder pad, that line around the outside, I'm blacking that out, and a little bit of black just fading up underneath each plate. I'm going to do on each one, so just fading up underneath each plate, and a little bit of black just from the sides, just fading in once it's touch. I'm going to go quite sort of dark on the uh, squares we had cut out there, fading from the outside inwards, and a little bit more grey on the over the top of it. And then the ropes, I'm just going to colour in the ropes a nice grey tone. I'm going to do the same thing for his under chin bit as well. So you see, I just bit up a grey, and a little bit of black just where it sits underneath. And the same for the upper bit, so I'm going to go grey over the whole thing, and a little bit of black just where it sits underneath areas. So it's all really come together nicely now. So I'm going to go under his chest, which is a really simple fade out. So underneath his arm, black, fading outwards, a tiny bit darker on the other side, with a nice highlight just through the centre bit. His forearm gauntlet, on the right hand side, I'm just putting a nice grey tone over that. You know, and it's going to make a really nice sort of shine, because it's sort of like light on the other side there. You know, that perfect strip down the centre gives a really, a really nice bend to it. Just putting some grey tone over his fabric of his arm, and a few little highlights just where it bends. Yeah, nothing too crazy about that. The uh, underhand bit, so I've gone quite dark around that and a little bit of a darkness just in the upper cut -off section above the top of the gauntlet. A little strip of black just coming down through the centre part and a little bit on the right hand side. So you get a nice two shine effect going down either side of it. From the middle of the fingers, a little bit of shadow just coming downwards and just colouring those balls on the uh, gauntlet as well. Tip of the fingers, same sort of thing, just fading down from the top a little bit, like so. So I'm going to go into her face now, so same sort of principle, you know, a little bit above her eye, leave that little height in the centre, and a bit of shadow directly around her eye. Now top it above her eye, we're going to put in a nice grey tone there, so it's got like a nice shadow underneath, and a little bit of grey on the forehead. A bit of shadow just underneath the nose, a little bit on the lip, on the chin, and just the back of the mouth, same as his, uh, just a bit more shorter. A bit of shadow just underneath her cheek, and a bit around the back of her face as well. Now we've got that one, we're going to her hair. So the hair's going to be very dark, you know, it's very geisha-like. So I'm going to have black from the bottom, coming in very dark from the top, leaving like a grey highlight over the top. I'm going to do this for each section. So I'm going to leave these little highlights, but it's very dark, so like a grey tone over the top, like this, and then darkness in between. Now I've picked up a couple of strips that I do a tiny bit darker, you know, I think it's quite a nice effect. But just do this section by section. You know, make sure the highlight's just a tiny bit different each time. I think it just gives like a really nice layer effect to it. And just build this up bit by bit. So grey tone over the top and then really dark blacks. You know, it's simple, but it's really, really effective way of doing hair. Now it's gonna go onto her neck here, so a bit of shadow underneath his hand and a bit of fade out from the back of his neck, her neck. That first part of her dress is gonna be very dark, so dark from the black, grey tone over the top, fading outwards. The second part's gonna be a bit lighter. Still put a bit of shadow in there, but a bit lighter. And the lower part of her dress is gonna be darker as well. Yeah, so that's like a nice kind of free sort of layer piece. Once we've got that done, I'm going to have a little centre bit there just behind the face done. So where you've got these shapes, I'm just fading black outwards just a touch. You know, it's a really nice way of putting an illusion of something being in the background and giving a nice little distance to it. I've done the same on the back of the helmet and I've just blacked out a little bit between their noses. So it's all come together nicely now. So now I'm going to go to the cherry blossoms. So put a little bit of grey just around the circle bit and a bit of grey from the tips coming inwards. And those little uh, leafy bits in between, I'm going to go black on those. I'm going to do this for all of these now. So I'm going to go over every one of these uh, cherry blossoms, then the exact same thing. Just building it up. You know, you can go darker, you can go lighter. You know, I kind of like this contrast of light and darkness. I think it goes very well against um, the image of the samurai and geisha. Build them up and then in the background, so a bit of grey fading out behind them just to kind of set them in place. 
And that pretty much does it. And I've got a little X on her cheek, which is my trademark, just to kind of mark her as my design. But yeah, people, that is how you draw a Samurai Geisha. You know, it's a nice romantic piece, you know, you know everyone loves this kind of one. You know, I really love the Indies. You know, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Check out my other ones. I have other Geisha and Samurai tutorials to come. I am the Breaking Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.